Our care has failed to extend the things which exist beyond the air, because often we fear the things we cannot see. We have been taught that the world exists within our narrow line of vision, even though the complexities of life arose from what we cannot see. To discover it, you must break its surface, submerge yourself in a beautiful woven tapestry draped in sand and coral, each grain serving a singular purpose. Its design reckless and effortless, random yet built with full consciousness. A living, breathing collection of habitats, homes, and creatures, silently giving us vitality. Yet, it's dying. Unraveling Earth's most beautiful creation. A palette of colors now fade to white, something that so effortlessly swayed in the motion of the waves now grows eerily still, and in a place so quiet, the silence now feels unbearable, piercing to the very core. A skeleton of what was, ruins of a city now forgotten. Because how can we suffocate? How can we choke something that merely slips through the crevices of our hands? How can we drown the creatures which call the water home? We raked its floor, ran dry its energy, and released what we pleased into it. And now we gravitate in its presence, scanning its remains, asking, how could this be? Many creatures have swam these waters. And as we mark the progression of history with inventions, gadgets, and art, this place remains steady against the changing currents, because what has been unwoven can be sown again. We may not exist in the water, but the life around us cannot exist without it, and not merely the element, but all life and the creatures that exist within it as well. We cannot simply speak words of hope and action, we must immerse ourselves in it. The second hand of the clock is beating, these very hours are a song of change slipping by of chances that we can seize because time was very kind to this place, slowly building it into a prestige work of nature. And on the spectrum of our existence, we are but a blink and the flick of a lash. This place spins into something that's not meant to be. Just as the millennia brought together the dust, so the seconds will tear it apart. We came from this place, and today we must return. We must find its pulse again. It may not have eyes to gaze into, nor the hands to reach out, but rest assured that its eyes are watching us, its hands furiously searching for stable ground as it stumbles into a desperate state. As we look into its depths, as we search to see what it sees, we cannot fear it, because we must face ourselves no longer complacent with letting it die, rebuilding so that it may not crumble.